with Spray Foam Solutions, and we are doing a video series here on frequently asked questions we receive from our customers, and one is regarding R value. What is R value, and what is the R value of your product? So to answer that question, we thought we'd talk about what is R value and why does it matter and why does it not matter? For starters, what is R value? So when we look at an insulation material, there's always a measurement that says how the material resists conductive heat loss. So we have a heat source on this side and it will be say, you know, 100 degrees on the outside of your home and it's 70 inside and that heat will conduct right through the material. That is conduction. That is measured by R value. If the sun's shining up in the sky, making radiant heat coming against your house, that product will go right through fiberglass. That is not stopped by the R value. Um, so then we have, well with that, how do we test R value? So when we go to test for R value, typically what they do is you'll have your insulating medium again, you'll have a heat source on the one side, and you'll have the temperature probe on the top side. How they do that, this test is done at 75 degrees, and once this heat is put here, say it's 120 degrees is put here, the test does not start until the insulation is fully saturated with the heat from the heat source. Then at that point, they see how many degrees it resists. So say for example, this resisted 19 degrees, we had 120 here, it started at 75, and it stopped raising at 101 degrees up here, it resisted 19 degrees. That would say that was an R19 material. The thing they don't tell you is how long it takes for the insulation to become thermally saturated. Fiberglass will become thermally saturated in about two to three hours. And spray foam, the same R value, will take nearly 24 hours for it to become thermally saturated. So, as you can see, even though they're a similar R value, it's a very, very different result. Uh, it's kind of like if you think about driving to from Orville to Worcester, about 10 miles apart. It takes me, what, 10 minutes in my car, but if I'm in a horse and buggy, it can take me a couple of hours to get there. It's traveling the same distance. Um, R value measures the distance. It doesn't measure how fast it conducts. So measuring an R value alone is a very, very poor means of deciding your insulation. Another thing is, the temperature is done at 70, or the test is done at 75 degrees, which is a temperature where fiberglass actually performs quite well. But when you drop it to zero degrees or even 30 degrees, you take it up to 110 degrees, those places where you really need your insulation, the thermal performance of fiberglass insulation drops way off and you actually have a lot lower R value at those temperatures. So, that's a little bit about how it's tested. One other thing to think about, just to make it another real clear, is what are some objects we have in our lives that are very conductive and that are thermally resistive? For example, let's take a coffee cup. One sixteenth inch, one sixteenth inch thick styrofoam cup. Pour your 200 degree coffee in there. It's a mildly warm on the outside. Pour the same thing into a glass cup and now you have a very, very hot cup. You can't even pick it up without a handle on it. Um, fiberglass insulation is nothing more than spun glass, which has air trapped in it. But when you get a wind blowing against it, it blows right through it. That's why you have your, you need your wall assembly here, and you have a hole in here, and we got the wind blowing against it. That's called air infiltration. That's one of your types of heat loss the air will blow right through that. So basically you have your three types of heat loss, air infiltration, convective, conductive, and radiant. So R value only measures the conductive. Um, think about a metal, metal is basically an R zero. You put heat source on the one side, it instantly heats up the other side. 
So I hope that gave you a little bit more clarity on what R value actually is and how it is a very misleading term in the building industry. Um, although it is important, it is definitely not the only number to look at. So we'd be glad to talk to you about any further questions you might have about spray foam insulation or any insulating material. If you have more questions, reach out to us. You can reach us on our Facebook page, leave a comment on the YouTube video here, or go to our web website. We have a contact us page there as well. Thank you, and you have a great day. And thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more of these. Have a great day.